Hello fellow God Awaiters, in this video we are going to talk about things I don't like in TOB model, or let's say things that I think can be improved. But here I want to say that I'm not going to talk about things that cannot be improved within the game scope. For example, um, I mean, we have 12 different art and rules, right? But what if we want to play as a uh, elixir you know, cultivator, or someone who is focused on artifacts, or more like in a very classic setting, we want to play as beast control set. You know, we do have all kinds of things like mystical board, etc. And all of these in the game right now use it focus. You can consider this as an attempt the devs try to make to achieve those things, but it's really outside the game scope to actually make this thing to happen. So instead, we are actually going to talk about is the two things I don't like in this game, and I think many people will agree with me. That is one, too much RNG -ness, or say too much randomness in this game. And the second one is too much grind in this game. Of course, I have seen this kind of comments under my videos many times. I mean, if you go to Reddit, go to Discord, go to any kind of forums, I mean, even in Chinese, go to Tiaba or go to 3DM, you will see, in general, people's comments about this game is always, oh, too much grindness, too much RNG. I mean, they are not wrong, but here, I want to first be the devil's advocate, try to defend them for a bit, because I think, first of all, they have been improving the situation since the devel uh, development stage. So, if you have seen this game at the beginning, like three years ago, there were way more grind and way more RNG, and this three years development actually made it already much better. But the problem is, many people do not know what are the ways to reduce the grind and RNG. So, here in this video, I'm first going to use a few examples. First, to explain what is grind and what is RNG. I mean, believe me or not, I feel like many people use the terms wrongly. And then I will try to explain, you know, Grind and RNG is mostly they are a way to solve a problem you meet in the game. You feel like, okay, I have to grind a lot to solve this problem. But those problems, they might be avoided from the beginning. Or there are other non-grinding, non-RNG ways to solve it. So, it's more like a lack of knowledge make you force, to force you to grind or depending on RNG here. So, I want to clarify a few situations in this case. But finally, in this game, I'm actually going to talk about that one thing which un really annoys me that I really don't like, and I think it really can be improved, which is not outside game scope. So, let's begin. So, I will use this as an example to explain what is RNG problem and what is grind problem. And this is actually one of the most asked questions for new players. So basically, when you need to break through, sorry, here. So when you need to break through from Qi Refining to Foundation, if you choose Heaven Foundation, you would need 6 Qi's, right? So Fire, Water, Lightning, etc. And in order to get the rare rarity of those Qi's, you need to kill those mystical monsters in the 6 different lands. For example, you can kill the, the Goliath Crab here, so that you can get the Water Qi. So now the problem is, you do not always get all the six monsters spawning in your game that easily. They are completely random. Every beginning of the month, if you check the message board, you might find, okay, a Goliath Crab appeared in the one of the, the fields. So then you can come there to kill it and get the thing. But it's very common that the game just keep on spawning the same kind of monster, and you just get a, all kind of water, you know, water cheese. Out of them and do not get someone something for example wood sheep that just does not spawn the evergreen and you just keep, don't get it so that is a rng problem because something complete out that you control and the game just have too much randomness now here is the thing this what problem can be avoided from the very beginning because you do not need really rarity of cheese because there is another way which is literally written here. Go to look at the bottom paragraph. Alternatively, you can kill monsters in those lands to obtain the chi shards and combine them in workshops in various towns. Yes, so you don't need to wait for those monsters to spawn. Instead, you can just roam around, not to kill the monster, but defeating those 
small mobs within these regions. This will give you chi shards, and then you can just need to go to the workshop and combine them. So in a way, you are changing the RNG problem into a grind problem, because in order to farm 100 chi shards, if you are not playing kill, you probably have to go through five or six battles within this land. And yeah, even in my opinion, who myself is, I think my tolerance level for grind is a bit higher than others. But still, five, six battles to farm a chi is a bit too much for me as well. But that's the reason why I recommend to play Chaos, because Chaos have double drop. So you only need two, three battles, and you got 100 shards. And three, which is just on my, you know, threshold. Below three or equal to three, that is not a grind. Above three, a bit more grindy. So yeah, in that, this is an example to show what is RNG problem and what is the grind problem if you have to farm something a lot of times. And also an example to show that sometimes problem can be avoided from the beginning, or there are some better ways to solve it. For example, again, with the same case, you might say that, yeah, I can get a chi I want, but I, I, I'm using a gourd, so I need to capture those monsters, or I'm using the eye to learn the skills. There are still other ways to do it. If you have watched my tips video, you would know there are two ways. One is to wait for the specific quest in your sect. Well, I don't think it's here right now, yeah, but one of the five star quests will ask you to kill a chi deviated cultivator. If you keep this quest not finishing the next month, it will spawn all six monsters around nearby towns. Another way is of course to use a Skyfrayer talisman. So you can get a recipe pretty easily if you do recipe Skyfrayer. Yeah, you can make it by yourself and you only need a wind essence, which you get from any mob, right? And the recipe can be get if you do any kind of function diagram. Function diagram, function diagram, special, no, item. No, okay, I don't have function diagram, but you can either get a function diagram and then just do one or two times. Oh yeah, it's here. And then you will get a recipe. So, and I don't think I need to show again the sky for husband, but in basically by changing the weather, you can force spawn the specific monster to spawn by changing to that specific weather. The problem is are, oh, there's only five weathers and there are six beasts. So I think six tails in Blazing Land and uh, Evergreen in Dragonflower Forest shares with the uh, Sunny, or maybe it does not share because in my game, it's always evergreen spawns if I change to sunny, but I heard some from someone else that in their game it's six tails. I don't know, but because in my opinion, I don't need to do this. I just need to farm a bit three times in kill. This is not a problem. And more importantly, there's a better way to solve all this problem is use your sect to trade for video. Your sect is the best resource. Just look at this. Not only you can get the six cheese, from the pavilion, of course, it's a little bit RNG dependent because they might not spawn the things you want. But for example, here we almost get everything right. Sometimes they are purple, but that's fine, as I mentioned before. And you even get many of the other breakthrough materials, so that really saves you some fighting with big monsters as well. So, sect pavilion, really good, really important. And in fact, the sect update is the one big thing they have improved during the development cycle because. When they introduce sect update, they add a lot of things into the Treasure Pavilion, and that's the time it reduces a lot of the grindiness and rng within the game. The second example is actually more like a Chaos problem, because didn't I just tell you that to go to play Chaos, it have double job, it will reduce the grind and solve the, some of the RNG problems. That's true, but in Chaos, I mean, in early game, you can sort of but going different ways, like, you know, buy stuff from your sect or learn skills from your masters so that you can go through some challenges. But somewhere around the middle to late game, you can you will need to have to start to build your build. You would need to upgrade your skills and mine skill to up to real. So this will introduce a few problems. First of all, you would need a manual. So good thing, a great thing about that, in chaos, if you go to your manual library of your sect, it can have red rarity manuals, unlike, for example, here. So, because this is only available in Chaos, so that's one good thing, right? So, your sect become your, again, your main resource of manuals, which is great. Well, if you do not know this, then you might be thinking too much, I can't find the manuals I want in the 
tons. But yeah, as, especially if you are a deck leader, you can always conquer other decks to get all the 12 uh, different martial arts and spiritual rules and choose that one single art that you need. In that way, you guarantee to have a lot of those mind skills and everything in within the same element so that you can get something you wanted. So that's where you get those manuals. And also, by defeating those world boss, you can get manuals. You might, you might be thinking, wait, I would need manuals to make myself stronger so that I can defeat the bosses. But then, if I do not have the manuals, you are telling me to defeat the bosses to get manuals. Isn't that a deadly loop? Well, not really, because those world boss will drop the manuals one realm higher. For example, Hell Shadow Khan drops Chi Condensation. I am not telling you to defeat, to farm Duncan at Foundation. You have to defeat it once, that's it. But once you come to Chikanization, two years later, Duncan will spawn, right? Then you can just save and load and farm in Duncan for the manuals you need. I mean, save and load is a normal part of the game. Don't be ashamed of doing that. And uh, finally, because, and also in general, set will provide you everything. Now, there used to be this problem, which is again pure RNG problem, that the manuals, is, let's use mastery as an example, because mastery is the one thing that you need to have four cooldown reduction. If you look at right now, the one I'm equipping now have four cooldown reduction sub-skills, but the one you find in the manual library normally don't have that. But the good thing is, they have introduced this thing called the animatic stones. So animatic stones, they are the thing, now you can get them from the different towns, uh, manual pavilion, you can get a quest. So you, basically you can get six in each region from Yongling to Mujian region, and I think you can get two more from some other quests. Now, once you have this thing, you can always, not you, you, you can always transfer previously learned skills, sub-skills, into a newly, that menu book that you want to learn right now. So with the help of adding math stones, you can actually get a perfect mind skill, like for example, mastery, a full cooldown reduction one, without much problem. And uh, yeah, so this is again something into they introduced into the game pretty late. However, that this does reduce a lot of the RNG -ness. I wouldn't call this grindness because there's nothing to grind for uh, manuals. You just need to pray for RNG for things to appear. That was previous problem. There are too much RNG -ness within the manuals. There's nothing to grind for it because it's just there in your library. You can you can claim that okay I have to farm Duncan or in this case I can need to farm Carvia so many times. That is grind. Yes, and if you are uh, keep on save and load farming one world boss just for a best normally you farm it for R and B and, and uh, L and B, right? Or the five normal mind skills. If you farm for those, yeah it is a bit grindy. But I think a better way to do that is just to manage your set better so that you get those red manuals RMB, LMB, and five normal, uh, for example, move from here. And with the help of animatic stones, you can transfer the useful sub skills. So this becomes not a problem. So I would really say animatic stones is one big improvement in the game that reduces both RNG and grindness in the manual learning part. So, about this, in second example, there's one more thing I want to talk about, is that, so previously, and which is still a thing that exists currently in the game, that, it, which is a bit grindy in my opinion, so, in order to upgrade your skills, you need to unlock this thing, and also to comprehend all the sub-skills, you would need materials, for example, you would need soul stones, let's call it soul stones, even though it's different realm, they're called different names, you need soul stones, and you would need comprehension sands or glass, whatever you call it. So those things can only drop from farming. And those stones will drop from farming those small dungeons and also doing quests. You know, mostly mission quests in your second missions and you killing those mobs give you G3, killing allies give you G2, and killing NPC type of enemies or mystical monster give you G1. So, and Comprehension Glass drops from mobs in the special dangerous zones, for example, in the Yongling region where it's six zones, that's for Qi refining, and laser for Foundation, six zones here for Qi Foundation, 
hundred thousand hills for golden core and etc etc. So you know where to farm them, and indeed you would need to farm them a bit. And the、uh, good thing is you have a trader pavilion. Again, if you are stack later at some point and you manage your stack so good that you can refresh this thing every two months, this is pretty easy to get all of this. I mean, they sell quite a big amount as well. So just buy them whenever you see it. Even if you're not stack leader, they are fairly cheap. So buy them when you see it. And if you're not stack leader, which means you will need to do missions anyway. So your gameplay should be centered around doing missions, which will give you stones and contributions. And you can use them to buy those stones and glasses, and so that you can comprehend. So this, I would say, it is a bit grindy in my opinion. But、uh, yeah, this is part of the game, and I think. In the current state of the game, because of the introduction of animatic stones and the fact you can be set leader, the grind is already much much less compared to previously, and I think they are pretty much tolerable in my opinion. If you know what you're doing, <laughs> I mean, if you decided I want a five special attack substitute move from farming the world bot, yeah, good luck. You might farming it say one load for one entire day and won't get it. But、that's just how RNG works. But if you with the help of an animal cells, it will be much easier. But here it comes to the part I hate the most, I dislike the most. I have the biggest problem of this game: Chuyo Region. I think for now you already know why. In the beginning of this video, I am showing something what I'm doing in Chuyo Region. Yes, that is the part I hate the most. So that's a weird thing. I see many people commenting they hate the grindness and RNGness about this game, but I don't see them especially complaining about Shiryu, which is really weird in my opinion because that is one thing in my opinion the worst part. But people are mostly complaining about earlier time, which in my opinion there are already ways to avoid the problem from the beginning or to solve the problem within a more smarter ways. Big thanks to Sect update. And thanks to animatic stones and many other things. Now, remember, I just talked about those two things. They do not exist in Chiyu. First, you do not have a proper set. You do have your own set, which is great, I guess. You can buy things from your set pavilions and get things from your library. But there are two main problems here. One, you cannot manage your set, which means your refreshment time for the share pavilion is slow. So it takes time to do it, and nobody likes wasting time. Second, which is much bigger problem, your manual library, especially those mind skills, becomes useless because all the mind skills in your library they do not have the transition set effect, and、uh, you should know what is this. Transition sets are the things you can get from the main menu pavilion, treasure or manual thing. If you see these mind skills, you will see the transition sets on the right side. Some of them are extremely powerful. Some of them can literally change one entire build. And you want to have this thing, and now you don't have it <laughs> because you can't get the big resource from your sect, right? Not only that, you can only get it from manual pavilion, and this brings two problems. I mean, okay, technically you can get it from destiny catcher, but that's another thing. There are two problems. One is RNG. What kind of manual did refresh? You can use exotic jade to change it. For example, I do have them. Let me just show you how to do this. With a lot of this, you can choose what kind of thing you want. It's almost like that manual pavilion option within your set, right? But whatever appears is still RNG. And remember, I talked about that. Okay, it doesn't matter. Even if you don't get the correct sub skills, like this move is very bad because there's no good sub skills here. But you had animatic stones to transfer the previous learned. Good sub skills, right? Guess what? There's no animal stone in the transcendent and reborn stage. There's nothing, and I do not understand why. This is a really, really bad decision, a really, really bad choice, in my opinion. Because、uh, that's there's no point of getting this. You still have to refresh every three months, and even for this exotic jade, you would need it. And how do you get those things? You get those things when you come to the Tianyuan region, and if you go to Tianyuan Mountain, so here there is a shattered altar. If you defeat enemies, 
within here you get the glorious jade. However, there are two problems. One, this thing only refreshes every three months. You come to engage the battle, you win, you lose, you quit it. You have to wait for three months for it to open again. So it's almost the same thing for you to just wait for three months for the manual pavilion to refresh. Second, the difficulty of this thing is difficult, and、uh, you are literally really stuck in the loop I talked about before. In order to learn skills, you have to defeat difficult enemies. But in order to defeat difficult enemies, you have to learn skills. Yeah, and now you cannot go to higher realm to solve the problem because you are already in the highest realm transcendent. <sighs> so yeah, and another problem I've already talked about two problems of cultivated islands. Another thing is. In order to buy those things, you need contributions, and the only way for you to get contributions, just like set contributions, is to do alliance calls. Now, the thing is, you you can even if you become the alliance leader, you don't get things for free. <laughs> so that means a lot of grind. Second, even especially it's especially problem when you are in reborn. So those enemies in chaos can be difficult if you are just in reborn and you do not have the good manuals. Unlike the sex quests, which are generally pretty easy to do, those ones are much more difficult because of the mythical monsters in Trio are difficult to kill. So yeah, basically, I feel it's the moment I entered Trio region, I feel the game just come back to the very primitive state before the sex update, before the introduction of any milestones. Everything you need just to farm, grind, or wait past a month waiting for RNG just. Pray for Iron Jesus, and I do not like this. And I can imagine, for many new players who do not know, do not know much knowledge about this game, that might be their experience at early phase, earlier part of the game as well. So I hope this video can help with those players, you know, to improve their experience in the early part of the game. I think it's from Yongling Region to Mushin Region, and.、Uh, To be honest, I think it's one of the reasons people don't complain about Trio that much because what I'm talking about are mostly about manuals and stuff, and they are more like a chaos problem. So if you're not playing chaos, I guess you can just breeze through all the quests, defeat Xin Tian, and go through the Heavy Mountain without much problem. You don't need to care about manual pavilion or the set effect thing. I guess that's why it's not a problem. But yeah, for people who are playing chaos. The grindness and RNGness in the Chiyo region is really a problem, actually, for me. So that would be my opinion, my problem for this game. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.